Hey, what's poppin'? It's your boy, JD Comedian. Well, what's up? How y'all doing? Yeah, it's been a day or two. <laughs> but uh, today, I want to talk to you guys about Jehovah Witness Baptism. Is it even really necessary? Well, let's go into it, you know? First off, I'm going to talk about Jesus and God and stuff as if I believe in him, even though y'all know I don't. But let's look at it. Let's look at it objectively. Let's say I do believe in him, right? Now, why was Jesus on earth in the first place? Apparently, he, ha he was here for two reasons. One, to set an example. Two, to make up for Adam and Eve's original sin, right? To, to, to make that all even. Yes, it sounds a little crazy, but whatever. If he was here to set an example, and also to make up for Adam and Eve's original sin, let's look at the example he set. Now, when Jesus was nine or, or 10 years old, was he not born Jesus Christ? Did he not know who he was at nine or 10? So he could have got baptized. Was it like not no pools of water or rivers back then or something that he couldn't get baptized in? Cause there were. So why didn't he get baptized when he was nine, 10, 11 years old? Maybe because he was setting an example. Why didn't he get baptized at 18 or 21 or 25? Maybe because he was setting an example. He got baptized when he was 30. Why would anybody want to do, to stop doing all the crazy stuff that teenagers and young adults do <laughs> when they're 30 years old? Because 30 years old is the perfect age to get baptized and devote your life to some religious cult. <laughs> to just a religion, I'm sorry. To devote your life to whatever entity you believe in. Because at 30, you've done your teens and you made all the stupid mistakes back then that you've learned from. Do your 20s, you know, you, you make better decisions, but still not some great ones. And when you're at 30, you're finally at the age where you can start making more responsible, lifelong decisions. If you, should, if you want to get married, I think 30 is the perfect age to know what you want, what somebody else wants, and enter a relationship in which you both can mutually be happy, possibly for the rest of your life. That's the perfect age to get baptized. That's the example that was set, and that's the example that should be followed, if you believe in that stuff. Now, the Jehovah Witnesses, they don't believe in that stuff. <laughs> I guess not. I guess they don't really care if Jesus set an example. They're just like, look, we need you to get baptized as soon as possible. Now, should anybody be allowed to pressure somebody to do something that they're supposed to just want to do, right? If I'm at a restaurant and somebody gives me a burger, do you think the restaurant owner comes from the back? Jay, eat this goddamn burger! I'm like, no, it's not gluten-free! No! <laughs> I want that burger and I'm going to demolish it as soon as it's set in front of me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that's how it works. When you want to do something, you don't need to be pressured into doing it. You don't need somebody to hold the fact that you haven't got your car license yet over your head to get baptized and try to blackmail you into getting baptized. No! If you want to do it, you just do it. And then they offer a reason. Well, you know, you need to get baptized because it's a protection. Really? What does it protect you from? Exactly. If you get baptized, does that mean automatically you're, you're the need or want to ever want to bang a chick outside of wedlock is never going to happen? Well, no, you know, you're still going to we'll still do that. Okay, well, um, well, right now, you know, if I'm a smoker, like, if I get baptized with an urge to smoke, just magically just go away? Uh, no, actually, you wouldn't even be able to get baptized if we knew you were smoking. <laughs> like, this is what I'm telling you. There is no protection that comes with getting baptized. On your end, not for you. That's protection for them. Because when you get baptized into the Jehovah Witness organization, the only thing that you're accomplishing is you're giving them the power to take your family and friends away from you. That's it. Congratulations, you're baptized. That's what they should announce. All right, we now have control over you and your family. And whether or not you're going to be able to speak negatively about us if you ever decide to leave. Thank you for that. Because if you're not baptized, you can still, you know, hang out with Jehovah's Witnesses if you want to. 
hang out, talk to your family and friends if you want to. You can do any and everything any other Jehovah Witness could do. Except like, you know, become an elder or ministerial servant. But let's be honest, very boring and very weird to do. I wouldn't want to do it personally, but you know, different strokes for different folks. But they say it's a protection. Like, does it protect you from dying in this world? Like, would you immediately be able to go through the Great Tribulation and Armageddon successfully just because you're baptized? No. <laughs> no, you can still get taken out. Actually, if you're not baptized, according to the Bible, there's a chance you can still survive. <laughs> according to the Bible, it says there's going to be a resurrection of the worthy and the unworthy. <laughs> or the righteous or the unrighteous. But this is the thing. Jehovah Witnesses will tell you, well, he's not going to resurrect you or he's not going to protect you in Armageddon if you're not a Jehovah's Witness. If you had the opportunity to get baptized and you didn't, he's not going to save you. First off, how can any human tell you what God is going to do? Just think about that for one second. If somebody came up to you and was like, hey, whatever you do, don't bring out a strawberry in front of Jay because if you do, he's going to whip out his ding -a and swing it all around. Don't do it. You don't want to do that, right? And then just for fun one day, right, while I'm sitting there mad at my business, you hop out. You're like, hey, here's a strawberry. And you like whip it out in front of me, right? And I'm like, uh, yeah, that's a strawberry. It looks delicious. Do you have another? And then you're like, oh, man, somebody told me you'd whip your ding -ling out and swing it around if I showed you a strawberry. Well, first off, three things. If you want to get the real information, you go right to the source. You don't need to ask around to get the real information from somebody that you know and you trust. Just ask them, point blank. Second off, why would you believe that? <laughs> like, that sounds kind of crazy. And then third, why would you even want to see that? <laughs> like, seriously, bro, put the strawberry up and get away from me. I don't trust you no more. But seriously, though, your relationship with God should be between you and God. They sh you shouldn't even have to get baptized in front of them. If we're being 100% honest, if you're ever like, you know what? I want to dedicate my life to God. You don't need no book. You don't need nobody else around. All you have to do to dedicate yourself to God, if you believe in that stuff, is just pray to God. Say, hey, I make a vow to serve you for the rest of my life. I'm giving myself to you. Not to no organization, not to no governing body, not to no set of elders or people. I'm giving myself to you, God, via this prayer. And then you run some bath water and you submerge yourself completely. Maybe if your tub is too small, you go get a, you know, you, you, you pay a little extra to get one of them tubs that, uh, at the uh, Essence Suites or whatever. Make sure they clean them tubs because it's a little bit of everything floating there. But you can just completely submerge yourself and come up and boom, you're baptized. Don't nobody even need to know. Why do you need to tell somebody what you've done with the one-on-one -on -one relationship with God you have? You don't need to explain that to nobody. And nor should anybody pressure you into doing anything that you don't want to do. Especially for somebody else. What if I was dating a girl and somebody was like, hey, have you gave any to Jay yet? You ain't. Girl, what's your problem? <laughs> you know? First off, I'd kick their butt for pressuring my girlfriend to do something she wasn't ready to do yet. And second off, what type of crazy individual would do that? <laughs> I mean, even if you try to be my wingman, bro, don't do that, bro. Let me do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my God. That's just, that's personally something disgusting that I would find disgusting. You know what I'm saying? But more than anything, your baptism is supposed to be between you and God. Nobody should be able to pressure you. Nobody should be able to blackmail you into doing it. You should do it because you want to do it. And there shouldn't be any added stipulations after it happens. The person you were before you got baptized should be the person you are after you get baptized. There shouldn't be no added pressure. Oh, you've dedicated your life now. Woo, you better watch your back. Like, it shouldn't feel like that. When you're done, it's just like, wow, you know, I've, I've done this, you know. I'm still imperfect. I'm still going to make mistakes. But I've dedicated my life to you, and I'm going to rely on your judgment 
either way and go. That's how it should be. It shouldn't be, oh, if you do something wrong, you're going to lose the ability to talk to your family and friends. And if, and if you got a job where your boss is a JW, well, you might lose your job. If your living situation is with, around some JWs, well, you might lose your living situation. That should not be, that shouldn't be how it is. We're supposed to set, we, should, we are supposed to follow Jesus' example. When Jesus dedicated his life, now apparently he was perfect, right? But he still did things that we're supposed to follow. I don't know anywhere where Jesus shunned anybody. I don't know anywhere where Jesus was like mean to people who, who were not, uh, who, who were homosexuals or anything like that. I don't remember that scripture where Jesus like, like I remember scripture saying he sat with the tax collectors and the other people who quote unquote weren't the like greatest of individuals. I remember those scriptures. I even remember the scripture where Jesus was was was, was a gangster. <laughs> he went to his father's house when they were selling like some bootleg CDs and he turned the tables over. He was ready to go toe to toe with him. I remember that. That's a good example. You see somebody trying to sell you something in God's house, you're supposed to go toe to toe with them. Like, what you doing, bro? If you're seeing people trying to kick you out of Kingdom Hall so they can sell the Kingdom Hall, you're supposed to square up with them. <laughs> Yo, know, what you trying to do, bro? This is the Kingdom Hall I was going to all my life. What you mean you trying to tear down and sell a property? Nah, we ain't doing that to God's house. This ain't your house. This is God's house. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's your boy, Jay the Comedian. I hope y'all having a great day. Obviously, I am. Uh, if you ain't subscribed, subscribe. There's a lot of people that watch my videos and they don't even subscribe to your boy. So, subscribe. And, um, yeah, man, holla at your guala. Deuces.